Thank you. My last question is for you, Dr. Abu al -Fadu. There seems to be a contradiction uh, with this alliance, many contradictions actually, but one of them is that each of these e extremist groups uh, persecute uh, any group that, that is different from them. People of, of, of other denominations within the faith, people of other faiths, secularists, women, uh, and, and other, other nations that they're at war with, yet they're allied together. How can we express solidarity across the religious divide at a grassroots level and also among p people of, of goodwill uh, who, who may, you know, may be agnostics or atheists? How can we express solidarity with the, the peoples of Saudi, of Yemen, of Palestine, and, and voices for peace in Israel and the United States uh, so that we can work together? Um, you know, and, uh, before I, I, I address the issue of solidarity, um, the, it, you pointed to something that is really important, uh, and that's the, the, the role of the pathology of hate in settler nationalism and also in the type of theological paradigm that has predominated in Wahhabism. And, and the irony is that it, it's, um, sorry, excuse me. Um, uh, Wahhabis introduced a, a theology that undermined and systematically uprooted centuries old theological doctrines of pluralism and co-Islamic or coexistence within an Islamic umbrella. And, and that's sort of the, the fascinating thing is that the Wahhabis and El Saud found bed buddies in Islamophobes because it's Islamophobes presented a type of Islamic history that, an, an Islamic history of, of intolerance and dogmatism that they actually found quite appealing uh, for very different purposes. I, you know, of course, I, I, I came in with a, with a lecture that I completely scratched and used none of uh, because I listened to Chris and Noam Chomsky and then I thought, you know, I'll trash the lecture. But I, I want to read you one quote that it's, it's rather, this is from a, a British fellow called Paul Grave. Um, oh, sorry, um, this is Philby. Philby was a, a British agent that played a very important role in uh, the birth of Saudi Arabia at one point, he supposedly converts to Islam, but even as a uh, even when after he reportedly converts to Islam, he he continued to have a remarkable racist disdain towards Muslims. He has a wonderful quote describing sort of the the, the nature of Wahhabis, of course, which he actually liked. He was very pro Wahhabi. Here's the quote: The most compromising characteristics of the Wahhabis, which again, I remind everyone that he actually liked. The most remarkable characteristics of the Wahhabis are their uncompromising hatred of their Muslim neighbors. The Shia are frankly condemned as infidels and polytheists, but it is for the orthodox congregation of the four Sunni churches, Turks, Egyptians, Hijazis, Syrians, Mesopotamians, Indians, and the like, that the Wahhabis reserve the undi their undiluted venom of their hatred. Th this was written in the late 1800s, early 1900s, I don't remember exactly. That, that theological paradigm never departed from Wahhabism. It, it, and it, it is a wonderful gift to the elite that monopolizes power. Because if, if you can demonize everyone else's, per se, externalize evil and belonging in everyone else, 
And then you can, whoever stands with our monopoly of power can be the wonderful uh, epitome of goodness. Um, it lends itself to, a, a, to colonialism, to racism, to capitalism, to elitism, to consumerism in, in a fascinating, an endlessly fascinating way that didn't have such tragic consequences. I would write poetry about it. It's so fascinating. I don't know how you express solidarity. I know one thing that definitely breaks the back of every Muslim who tries to stand up and take a position uh, and do as the Quran says, testify in justice even if it's against your own self and your loved ones and your family. And that is when you find non-Muslims endorsing either explicitly or implicitly Islamophobes uh, like that supposed liberal fellow. You mentioned him uh, in your talk, Chris. No, uh, the guy who has a TV show, um, Bill Maher. Yeah. It, it breaks your back. Uh, and so if you want to express solidarity with Muslims, think about how you can resist Islamophobes and condemn their racism for what it is. 